All right, everybody, the time is 4.31 p.m. So I'm going to call the meeting at the Tonder IC School Health Advisory Council to order. We may have a few people down the fifth time being here. It's the first time that we've uh, had a 4.30 afternoon meeting in the boardroom, so traffic's a little bit tricky out there. So we'll wait for them to come on in as we move up to the meeting. It's our first meeting of the 2022-2023 school year. I'd like to welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I see, is, is Dr. Hans still with us? Okay, Dr. Hines, are you going to be like this? <laughs> 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 We're glad you're with us. <laughs> you want to say anything to the group, Dr. Hines, well, before we start? I want to say, um, thank you. I want to say welcome and thank you for being part of our chat this year. Um, you get a chance to talk to some of our students and some of our teachers and teachers. Sharing and Chris Ford and Cheryl Hine and Sharon Sturchy did it for a long time, and so um, we're going to have a, a lot of parents today here elected to be co chair. So uh, it's a proud tradition, and it's a, it's a great committee. You know, we've been over the years, I look back, we've had discussions about vending machines and uh, coordinated health uh, program that we're in. The, nutrition guidelines. Uh, there's a lot this year. I know uh, taking up some changes in the TEKS uh, with human sexuality and human development. So there's some really important topics for this year. Uh, so there's just a lot that, that comes with it. And I can't say thank you enough for being part of the process. Uh, it's a, an important one. It's a lot of voices. We uh, can work on some, some guidance for our programs. Board appreciated. If you're not aware, our board actually appointed you um, at a board meeting earlier this year. So we were listed. And so uh, I say thank you for, for getting your time. And some of you have been here and kind of rolled forward. Thank you. Some of you are new. So you'll be learning a little bit about what this group does. Uh, so I'll give it back to Mr. Schreiber. All right. Thank you, Dr. Hans. I got, and as, and as we said, this is a new transition for us as well. Being back in person feels really good. Um, but, you know, we do broadcast live, so we're the technology thing. We're going to manage that this year. Uh, you know, it was, we spent a couple years virtual, so that was quite the adventure, you know, but it's really good to be back in person. So um, we'll work through all these with the mics and everything else. So just be patient with us as we get through that. I do want to send around a sign in sheet. And we'll start here. If you did not sign in, if you please go ahead and sign in on this one. If you did, just pass it on down. We'll be sure that all voting members did sign in today. All right, first of all, I want to thank our returning members uh, from the shack who've been with us uh, for especially last year and those who've been with us for a while. But I do want to take a moment to welcome all of our new members with us uh, from McKinney Creek Feeder. If you just kind of raise your hand, give us a wave if you're here. Madison Perry. Is Madison here? All right. From our College Park Feeder, Becky Fralix. Wendy Judy. Uh, Garrett Costello. Uh, April Curthy. All right. <laughs> Thank you for being here. From our Conroe feeder this year, we have Sarah Jeffus and Tony LaBelle. From our Grand Oaks feeder, we have Aaron Bingham. And from our Oak Ridge feeder, Shelly Weaver. We have Lance Miracle. From the Woodlands feeder this year, we have Reed Davidson. Christina Keller. Paola Silva. Marina Musanti and Laura Prosky. If I said your name wrong, please let me know, by the way. <laughs> Our community business partners this year, we'd like to welcome Crystal Good with HCA Houston Healthcare Conroe. We have Jill Phillips Barrera, Maximus Texas Health Steps. This is Jill. Michelle Scape, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, Better Living for Texans. And Dr. Lada Joshi, Lone Star Family Health Center. All right, we'd also like to welcome some new Conroe ad ISD administrators to the group this year. Joining us this year, we have Mamie miller Prejean, who's our coordinator of guidance and counseling. Dina Graves, our athletic specialist. She's probably at football. Dana Fisher, health services specialist. And Myla Cobbler, nurse at Patterson Elementary. We also take a moment to recognize our Conroe ISD student representatives who are here with us today. These students are from the Academy for Science and Health Professions. We have Marie Ashby, Kaylin Harrison, and Katie Quarles. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate y'all. 
All right, the first item is what is the shack? So um, it was going to spend some time kind of going through, um, you know, responsibilities. You do have copies of the PowerPoints in front of you if you'd like. I am going to post it as well on the screen. But I just want to ask everybody a question first. I want, think, think, want you to think about this for a second. How many of you got a good night's sleep last night? You had a good full eight hours? A couple people. All right. That's not good. All right. How many of you had a good breakfast this morning? Had a lean protein, some good carbs? Okay. Did anybody exercise last night or this morning? Okay, good, good. All right, so these questions that I'm asking, we ask students this, but when do we typically ask our students these questions? What day? Is it Katie? When do you, know, when do you, when do you have a teacher say, be sure you eat a good breakfast, get some lots of rest, what's going to happen the next day? A test, a test, okay? Why don't we do that all the time? You know, as parents, why aren't we making sure our kids get a good breakfast and they're getting good, plenty of exercise and plenty of rest? You know, it's, that's, the, that's kind of what the shack the feeling is. We're going to do things that every single day our students on our campuses can feel like they're living in an atmosphere that promotes healthy living and a healthy lifestyle. You know, and I can tell you our PE teachers and our coaches in the district and our health teachers, you know, that's one of the things that we really focus on is what can we do every day to improve the health and wellness of our students on every campus. But the, the great thing about the shack is so do we. We get to do the same thing. Okay, so this is why you're here today. But I do want to share a little PowerPoint with you. So the School Advisory Council, a few notes about it. And a lot of you know this already, but some of y'all who are new, we've talked about it. But just kind of a reminder, requirements of the shack. The shack must meet a minimum of four times a year. So this is our first meeting, and we do have three other meetings scheduled. If we find throughout the year that we need to meet uh, through subcommittee or through other meetings, we will announce those as well. By Texas law, the school districts are required to appoint at least five people to the local shack where the majority are parents and not employed by the district. We have quite a few more than five, and we're so grateful for that, that you guys are here to participate with us today. The committee must provide the Board of Trustees with recommendations on issues concerning the school's health education curriculum. Uh, last year was a huge year for that. Uh, the shack spent an entire year working through Proclamation 2022, which is our adoption for our PE and health curriculum. Uh, prior to that, prior to last year, it had been 13 years since we had an adoption on the PE and health curriculum. So it was a huge task. Uh, the SHAC did a tremendous amount of work and the board did approve our recommendation. Um, the SHAC will suggest modifications to previously adopted policy regarding health education and curriculum. An annual report outlining the council's activities over the course of the year will be provided to the board of trustees. And recent legislation requires SHAC to operate under the Open Meetings Act, which is why we're here today in this setting. Who else makes up this committee? Parents. The parents make up the majority. So the majority of our shack are parents of students within Conroe ISD. On our shack, we have public school teachers. We have public school administrators. We have district students. We have healthcare professionals. We have members of the business community, law enforcement, senior citizens, the clergy, and nonprofit health. Why are you here? Why are you on the shack? To represent our community in a way that reflects our community's values and beliefs. And that's why we want to make sure that we have all feeder zones represented on our shack, which we do. To serve at the district level, providing advice to the district on coordinated school health programming and its impact on student health and learning. Uh, as a reminder, uh, our district has uh, adopted the CATCH program for a coordinated approach to child health. That program is in place at all of our elementary, intermediate, and junior high campuses and to assist the district in ensuring that local community values are reflected in the district's health education instruction. The duties of the shack. Local school health advisory councils duties include recommending the number of hours of instruction to be provided in health education, health education curriculum appropriate for specific grade levels that may include a coordinated health education program designed to prevent obesity, cardiovascular disease, and type two diabetes through co coordination of health education, physical education, nutritional services, parental involvement, and instruction to prevent the use of tobacco and opioid abuse. And we have that represented here in this room today as well. Uh, and the appropriate grade levels and methods of instruction for human sexuality instruction. Look at our expected meetings for a chair, which will be determined today to call the meeting to order. So, I mean, you're gonna hear my voice a lot today, which I'm sorry. <laughs> but ultimately, this is, this is a parent-led group, and so we want parents to be involved. We will have a parent co-chair, and they'll also be a part of these presentations and this, these meetings each week, or each month that we meet. For a secretary, which also will be determined today, to record and present the minutes. So it's the first time we've had a secretary appointment this year, but we'll have a parent representative also be secretary to make sure to tr keep track of the minutes, to also provide the reading of the minutes and keep track of attendance. And a review and approval of the minutes from the previous meeting, which we'll have today. 
and the agenda items, informational or community outreach. That sometimes we have people come in from these groups and give presentations. They also will present to you information that we also present to our teachers, which will go into the classroom and present to our students. And a call to vote on items. So we'll have uh, items today that we'll vote on. So as a reminder for the voting, everybody at the table is a voting member. But we also have, you know, some members of our district administrative team here, some of our directors, superintendents, they're here to act as counsel and answer any questions that you guys may have. What else can you expect? Subcommittees may be formed when the need arises. Uh, we do a really great job. We always have parents step up to volunteer for subcommittees. And again, it's one of those things we want parents to be involved. So as we see a need arise, we'll set, uh, create a subcommittee. That subcommittee will meet, record the minutes, and they will report back to the, the whole shack next time we have a group meeting. Future meetings may include making amendments to the bylaws and active discussion on items brought to the committee or those topics committee members would like to see addressed that are within the scope of the shack. And this is where parents, again, you guys are involved. You know, if you have a, 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 something you'd like to see brought before the shack, you can reach out to me or one of the other, other parent co-chair and we can look at how that fits with the shack and bring that agenda item up to everybody. And our meeting dates for meeting today, the next scheduled meetings are January 24th, April 25th and June 13th. These will all be emailed out to you as well. These meetings are also posted online. They're in every campus. And I will also send out reminders each time we have a meeting and they'll also be part of the minutes when you get the minutes as well. Okay, that's it now. Anybody have any questions about that before we move on? Okay, so the next item is consider the approval of the minutes. So what we do when we do the minutes is I have uh, sent out a copy of the minutes to everybody that's here. And so you receive an email with those on that. But what we do is we also read those items that are um, that were uh, included in the minutes so that you guys can have a review of what was voted on or what was presented at the previous meeting. So I'll read a copy of the minutes to you now. If you have any, do you have anybody heard from? If you have your device with you, it's in front of you. All right, we did. This is from the June 14th meeting. Our first topic was a school health survey from 2021 to 22. I presented the annual school health survey. The purpose of the survey is to gather data to allow the TEA and the other policymakers to better address the health related needs of Texas public schools and students. The results for Conroe ISD included shack meetings and representatives, physical activity requirements, equipment, facilities and accommodations for physical education, policies regarding e-cigarettes, tobacco products and requesting fitness gram results, suicide prevention programs and training, health education, the catch program and the USDA smart snack requirements, Conroe ISD local wellness policy and Conroe ISD school bullying policy. The next item was a shack vision, mission and bylaws update. Mrs. Westover provided an overview of the vision, mission and bylaws and introduced additions to the bylaws. The additions included establishing the position of shack secretary and a membership subcommittee, the creation of a membership application, membership terms of service, member attendance expectations, and representation across all CISD feeder zones. Dr. Winkler asked about references used to guide the vision, mission, and bylaws subcommittee's creation of the new bylaws. Mrs. Westover explained that the subcommittee spent time researching other shacks throughout the state and used CISD board policy as the foundation for the bylaws. Mrs. Westover confirmed that the bylaws are in line with other school districts shack bylaws and that assistant superintendents and directors will continue to be non-voting members who will act as a resource of information during the meetings. Bryce Spear asked about the language of the statement regarding representation across all feeder zones. Joe Dahl recommended that the word shall in the statement regarding parent representation be changed to actively pursue parent representation across all CISD feeder zones. William Kelly recommended adding wording to include an appointed representative, school administrator, teacher, et cetera, in the case a parent representative from one of the CISD feeder zones is unable to be added to the shack. Robert Horton recommended that the appointed representative follow the same application process to maintain consistency. Members of the vision, mission, and bylaw subcommittee agreed to include the recommended changes to the bylaws. The Conroe ISD School Health Advisory Council vision, mission, and bylaws were approved and adopted by unanimous vote. Motion Joe Dahl, second Joe Barrera. Next item was supporting our children's well being during the summer breaks. Lindsay Taylor, Conroe ISD mental health specialist, presented information about how to encourage child well being throughout the summer months. Mrs. Taylor provided information on the development stages, developmental stages of children, 
transition from school to summer routines, and tips to encourage child well-being. Emphasis was placed on establishing structure and routines during the summer months, making nutrition and physical activity a priority, and limiting screen time. Next was an overview of future meetings. The meeting dates for the 2022-23 school year were shared. The plan is to conduct all meetings in person. The location is the Conroe ISD boardroom. The time will be 4.30 p.m. to better accommodate the schedules of the SHAC members. Flyers with meeting information will be posted at all CISD campuses. Future meeting dates were discussed. The School Health Advisory Council will meet on the following dates for the 2022-23 school year, October 11th, 2022, January 14th, 2023, April 25th, 2023, and June 13th, 2023. Okay, sorry about that, that was a lot. <laughs> um, let's see. All right, so now I'm gonna call for a motion to vote for the approval of the minutes as distributed in red. Uh, if you motion, would you please state your name since we do have a lot of new people here today. Do we have a motion? motion. Thank you, Ms. Spear. Do we have a second? Second, Dr. Harden. Thank you, Dr. Harden. Any discussion? Yes. The, sur the survey is, uh, well, it's not really a survey. It's one of those things where they, the state sends us the requirements for the year. And, we, and we, so, we, so they ask how many shack meetings did you have a year? And we'll say four meetings. How many minutes of recess are given each year? So it's done by the coordinators. And so we plug in all the information that's given to us by, from the state and we report that every year to TEA. So it's not kids. Oh, no, it's not kids. Administration, Administration yes. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, so we'll go ahead and now vote on the uh, approval of the minutes. All in favor? Raise your hand, please. We'll vote by hand. I can count. Okay, it looks unanimous. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any opposed? All right, the minutes from the June 14th meeting stand approved as distributed in red. Thank you. All right, the next item is a nomination and approval of a parent co-chair for the SHAC. State law requires that a parent serve as a co-chair for the SHAC. So nominations are now in order, and I'll begin by nominating Mrs. Misty Westover to serve as parent co-chair for the SHAC. Uh, she's unable to join us today, uh, but she is. Uh, she does have a link that she is watching, a private link. Thanks to our communications team for providing that. Uh, a little bit about Mrs. Westover. Uh, she has served as parent co-chair before. She's led subcommittees, including the subcommittee responsible for creating our vision, mission, and our bylaws. She's a Conroe High School feeder parent representative. Are there any further nominations? Can you explain a little bit about what the responsibilities are? Yeah, so, so the parent co-chair does kind of what I'm doing. They'll do a lot of this part as well. And they also help coordinate uh, the meetings, uh, the different topics in the meetings and information items that are presented to the parents. Also, parent co-chair typically will chair a lot of the subcommittees if we have a call for a subcommittee. Do we have nominations for a parent co-chair? Yep, yeah, yes. Uh, Garrett Costello. Okay, Garrett Costello. Mr. Costello, would you like to address the group with anything? Uh, no, I okay. you know, just want to be involved, and, and uh, I'm not in, involved in a lot of things, so I can be all in on this. Okay. So. All right. Thank you, Mr. Costello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Bryce Spear. Bryce Spear. Dr. Spear, would you like to address the group? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Bryce Spear. I'm a fourth grade by Nancy Dell. 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 Any other nominations? Okay, if there are no further nominations, the nominations are closed. We, sure. Sure. Are you the Oh, no, I served on it last year, and so um, I, I, I just kind of been serving, and um, when I was part of the shack last year, um, and then this year I was looking through things. 
Has the other person been in the group before? Yes, she has. Would it be good to get? That's up to the group. Okay, so the nomination to close, we'll go ahead and vote now. So all in favor of Mrs. Westover for parent co-chair of the shock, please vote by a praise hand. Mrs. West, Mrs. Misty Westover. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, thank you. For Mr. Garrett Costello. Uh, I'm, I'm, can I withdraw? I, I want to vote. You, you, <laughs> no, that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, for uh, Bryce Spear. I see 18, thank you. Okay, Bryce Spear will serve as the parent co-chair for the SHAC committee for the 2022-23 school year. Thank you, Dr. Spear. All right. Next item is the nomination and approval of a secretary for the shack. Nominations are now in order. I'll begin by nominating Mrs. Sam Twork to serve as secretary for the shack. Mrs. Twork is a Caney Creek feeder parent representative, has served in the shack before, was on the vision, mission, and bylaws subcommittee. So Mrs. Sam Twork, are there any further nominations? Well, Grand Oaks. Oh, I'm sorry, Grand Oaks. That's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you want to address a group at all? <laughs> okay. Any other nominations for secretary? Okay. So with that, nominations are closed. We'll now vote. All in favor of Ms. Twerk for secretary of the shack. Uh, Pray say hand, please. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Ms. Twerk will be the secretary for the shack. Thank you. This is why I'm new secretary too. <laughs> All right. The next item on the agenda is a review of the parent consent opt-in procedure. So if you want to pull those out, I have uh, copies of those for everybody as well. So there are three, and, I, and you guys, I've sent all this to you as well, so you'd have a chance to review them, but there are three parent consent forms uh, because of the different types of instruction. We have a parent consent uh, regarding human growth and development instruction for fifth grade. And then we have a parent consent form for the human growth and development instruction and instruction related to the prevention of child abuse, family violence, dating violence, and human trafficking for sixth grade. And as you see at the bottom, this is, again, this is where it's a lot different from years past. We have uh, the opt-in and the opt-out for both. So you would, as a parent, you would look at this and say, if you give permission for your child to be a part of the human growth and development instruction, you would opt in. If you did not, you would check that box. And then it's separate for the prevention of child abuse, family violence, dating violence, and human trafficking. You would opt in or out. So the difference this year, some of you have had kids go through school before, you know, just as it was an opt-out form. Now it's an opt-in. So if you're a child to take part in any of this curriculum, you must sign the form. You must opt into the curriculum. If the instructors for this course do not receive your form, then they do not receive the instruction because it assumes that you do not want them to be a part of it. So you must opt in for instruction. And you'll see the third one is for our high school health one course. This course is offered throughout high school, but this is also the course that is offered as an elective in eighth grade. It's a semester course in the eighth grade. And so this form is similar to the other one where you have an opt-in for both levels of instruction for human sexuality, which is the human growth and development instruction. And then you also have opt-in or opt-out for the prevention of child abuse, family violence, dating violence, and sex trafficking. Does anybody have any questions about the forms? And I'll, I'm sorry, by the way, these are being translated into Spanish right now. So they'll be out to campuses very soon. Yes, sir. So, you sent a PDF for later in the day. Mm -hmm. This last one, is that what this PDF is about? Um, oh, yes, this one, this relates to the human growth and development PDF that you got late in the day. Okay. Yeah. And so this, this last page is for high school. Yes, sir. 
Any further questions? Okay. So, like, I looked over SB9, and so SB9 suggests um, Texas State Home Line is where this legislation has come from to create this information that we need to change a bit of for our students in terms of um, human growth and development instruction. And so, SB9 has um, very specific requirements of this form, and as I was looking through what we have written and what the law is requiring, I see um, it is important. And so, I um, I don't know if we want to take that out point by point. I'm happy to go through it, but we just table this and we can address them, whatever is the most appropriate thing to do. But specifically, um, you know, it says that um, that if you look at the high school one, um, and even the sixth grade one, these forms have to be separate. The human social development portion for permission has to be a separate form based off how this reads. It says that um, this permission may not be included with any other notification or request for written consent provided to the parents, other than the notice providing such a subsection can So that's just one of the things uh, that I think is not congruent with what SD9 is asking us to do. Um, and I can keep going with them, but I think we should think about this. I mean, just one of our administrators was, I, this was uh, created and cleared by our legal counsel. So, um, okay, well, I, mean, I, think I think for the sake of all of this as well, it's just when you start sending out so many forms to parents, a lot of times it's difficult to get them back. Yeah. And because sometimes, and so this information, these, uh, depending on what campus it is, this information will be provided on the same day. So you'll have the human growth and development uh, plan or the uh, lesson given, and you'd also give the SB9 lesson given on the same day, depending on the schedule, the master schedule of each campus. That's why we put it in one form so parents can see what dates they're going to be presented on. I don't disagree with logistics. I'm just saying that the way that SB9 reads, it's considered something that's a separate form from how I am reading it. Um, so I don't think that that's the case. But um, yeah, I think it's important to have that Do you have a child enrolled in Health One? No. Yeah, this is for the parents of the children involved. That's they, they, they're the ones who have access to the online. But um, also, I have a sixth grader, and um, he would be, I think, part of the Good Heart Will Talk super reference to that presentation. And I was wondering, like, maybe, maybe my question's more basic. Like, these presentations, is that all the kids would be getting? As far as instruction, yeah, that's on a later item in the in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Videos or you know links to other things on their SSO. That no, we're going to discuss this curriculum as an item, the sixth grade curriculum in particular, as an item. So this link would have other things added to it later after we approve. Yes, that's why. Yes, what, the shack approves it first before it gets added to the links. Yeah. Do we want a motion? Do we want a motion to table this until we can review? Okay, so Mr. Costello, correct me if I'm sorry. Do we have a second? That's okay. We have a form that we're currently using, right? Yes. It will have to be as soon as we'll have to get together and just out, you know, and decide as soon as possible because this it does affect the timing of instruction. Because particularly the the high school course that is a semester course, and they're waiting on us to make decisions on all these things so that they can present, can continue on their with their uh, curriculum. Because as it stands now, we do have the curriculum in place, but we don't have this is what's on the item today. We don't have the permission forms that we have to get out to them as well now, and we'll also have to look at the curriculum that we're going to approve today. 
There's no last year's form. This is the form we were going to use for this year. Yeah. Because it's opt in. Why did they change it? That was the state, and I'm honest, I couldn't speak for that. Oh, it's just the state. Yeah, it's listed in the section 128 got the report. Yes, that's back in December 2021. So we have that thing on time to discuss this. Could we maybe have a, a subcommittee that works on it and we could maybe get together really quickly to make our community? We could get a, sub, a, a subcommittee, yeah. I could send that out and we can have volunteers. Yeah. Okay, any more discussion? Okay. Do you want to vote to table? Oh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Oh, it's maybe related, but I, I know that my son's school has already sent something out with um, a newsletter that's opt out still. Okay. So um, that just says, here's the, here's the links to the videos and please let us know. So do they know that this is coming? Well, are we... Which are we opting? I thought we were opting out the form for high school. We're opting out. We're, we're going to table all the forms. We're taking all the forms. Okay. Okay. We'll address that as well. Mm -hmm. The health classes and then the fifth and sixth grade, is that the only space or the only instruction given on human sexuality in CIC? Yes. Um, I don't know what administrators want to take that one, address it. I don't know. I'm unaware. Health one course in eighth grade or in high school, and then the sixth grade, and then of course the fifth grade has the, the, the videos also. So that should be the only course. So I recommend, yeah, like Mr. Dahl said, contact the administrator on campus. So if there's a subcommittee uh, on these forms and they end up being adjusted or revised, would a vote occur before the next meeting in January? We would call. We would. Oh yes, sir. We'd have to call a special meeting. So if any, any of that, if yeah, we we'll have to get together because we'd have, be or... we'll have to have a quorum to vote. Mm -hmm. So we'll try to get that on the schedule as quick as we can. Any more discussion? Are we able to send out whoever's on the subcommittee send out materials for everyone to review? So if there's any that, feedback opportunity before we all show up in person to vote, just the voting's more of a formality to have the opportunity. How, the subcommittee would, that we would reconvene the SHAC, the subcommittee would present all their findings to the SHAC first, and then the SHAC would vote as a group. I guess what I'm saying is an opportunity to provide these materials before the meeting. So Prov Oh, like I did with you guys with this? Yeah, we can. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's, I mean, legal's not here to defend themselves, I don't think. Right? Right. But it seems like it, it's a little late, you know, because what if there was a revision? I think everyone just assumed it would be. Well, I can say this information got to us very late this year. The, the, the teachers weren't approved till the end of the summer. Uh, as, so that gave us one chance to meet as a group with our health and PE teachers to go through this information. So it was really, it's been a mad dash to try to get everything you know, in place. Uh, it's a lot of information to try to get together for, you know, semester course. So we would definitely try to get together, hopefully end of October, getting in November, and come to a consensus and then get those out to the teachers and the parents. Just for everyone's benefit of quorum, it's 51% of the meeting. Mm -hmm. And last year we had a lot of Zoom meetings, so given that this is, like, some of these have their own function class, we could do Zoom or we would facilitate more people attending the network. We consider that. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we tried to, you know, which of course we want to be in person, but we moved to the 430 because that was kind of the, you know, talking to people, that's the, it was better for them to meet at 430, but we could consider that also. Because I know it's a busy time of year for a lot of such parents. Any more discussion? Do we need to vote on it, you know, or just table it? Since we got a table, it, do we need to vote for its table? No? Yes, I'm saying no, yes. <laughs> you had a second, got a vote. 
Okay. All right. So let's go ahead. So all in favor of tabling the uh, the human uh, human sexuality instruction in SB nine instruction, uh, please raise your hand. All in favor to table it. Okay, 24. All opposed? Okay. Okay, we agree to table this discussion up to a later date. We will call together a subcommittee. I'll send an email out, ask for volunteers, and we'll set those dates as soon as possible. All right. The next uh, item is review of intermediate human growth and development instruction for a fifth and sixth grade instruction on human growth and development. So Conroe ISD utilizes the Procter and Gamble video series, Always Changing and Growing Up, a program that received SHAC approval in 2017. This instruction is in line with the TEKS. We are reviewing, we are reviewing this resource with you today to the changes in the parent opt-in because of the changes in the parent opt-in procedures and the fact that we're now able to provide parents with online access to this resource to review prior to opting their child into the lesson or to use as a guide at home with the parents leading the instruction. Whereas before in the past, parents had to request copies of it or request access to it on a campus. Now it will be all online for parents to review. Uh, with more information on this item, I'd like to invite Mrs. Barbara Robertson, Director of Health Services to address the council. Ms. Robertson. Good afternoon. Is that close enough? Yeah. So I was asked to give you a brief overview of the growing up videos that we use to provide some of our human growth and development information to our fifth and sixth grade students. So these are the TEKS that are addressed in the always changing and growing up videos for fifth grade. And these are for the TEKS for the sixth grade. So as a little bit of history, um, prior to the 2017-2018 school year, our schools had the choice of two different versions of the Marsh Media videos. So there was just around the corner in the fifth grade and growing up in the sixth grade. But you'll see that the majority of the schools showed the newer version for fifth grade, but the older version for the sixth grade. So we were stuck somewhere between the 80s and the 90s. Um, but the, the nurses and the PE teachers gave uh, back some feedback on the sixth grade that they felt that the video just fast forward really quickly from the older version to the new version and they didn't feel that our students were uh, mature enough and, and comfortable enough to see it was the same content but delivered in a different way. And, um, and one of the big issues was equity, right? the parent or the guardian had to come up to the school, make arrangements to come and watch the video if they wanted to see it prior to their child. And we all know how difficult it was to get here today. So that really was not a, an equitable program to allow everybody the opportunity who wanted to do that. So um, in uh, the spring of 2017, we uh, went to the, um, the shack and looked at the videos that we were showing. So we all got a history lesson in, in Bruce Springsteen and, um, and also were able to view these, the new videos that, were, that you have on the link from the P&G Schools program. So they brought a fresh look to um, the information that we provided, but the online access offered equity to all of our parents. They were able to view it before their child did, they were able to view it with their child if they wanted to do that. And then they could make an informed decision, do I wanna sign the permission form to let my child view that at school? So we really, really liked that part. Um, so even though we do show the same video to fifth and sixth grade, so there's a boy version and there's a girl version, um, but they are, they're the same grade level. So our nurses, feel that even though we show the same video to fifth grade girls and to sixth grade girls, their maturity level, they get a little bit of different out of the content, right? Um, so we went through the SHAC committee and, um, and everyone watched these videos and felt that we needed to move forward 
and be able to provide this um, information. So as you'll see, these next two slides, these are some uh, screenshots from the Growing Up girls, and um, they're up to date pictures that our, our children can relate to, but they're gentle. They're not in your face, um, threatening, um, worrisome type um, medical pictures that we saw in some of the older versions. And um, so we felt that these um, were more appropriate for our children. If you've had a chance to watch the video, I think the last minute and a half, two minutes is actually some outtakes and it's just these children dancing and, and playing, interacting with each other, which our children can relate to. And, um, so the online access is, um, is a big plus for this program. It allows a more collaborative learning um, effort between the school and the family, which is what we want. We want that partnership and, and allow parents to make the decision of whether or not their children see these videos. They are up to date, they're bright, they're informative. Um, they take away some of those more graphic photos um, that we saw in the other versions of the Marsh Media. And uh, both fifth and sixth grade students are in the same, uh, show the same. So we're not having any mistake of, are we showing, are we showing this, is this a sixth grade video? We're showing it to the wrong grade level. This is, um, this is the same. And um, so that is how we decided um, the shack uh, voted. And um, if I recall correctly, it was unanimous um, to move to, um, to these videos. And I think Thank you, Mr. Anybody have any questions? So do they do the fifth, they do it in, they, I guess they can do it in fifth or in sixth grade. Like if you opt out in one gr grade, Yes, you could. Then you can maybe say, okay, they'll get to see the video. Is it's that the, why it's like, because it's the same video, like you said. Well, the, um, this program didn't provide a second video. The, um, it was, this was the, the great, one. this was the one. They had a co-ed video that we did not like. And, um, and so these, this was the video that was available. Since then, the PNG programs has been um, taken off of the website. PNG is, um, we were told last year, updating. But the program at the time allowed every um, school to get a free copy. And so we did not purchase anything from them. It was free kits that you could get some deodorant and some pads and, and um, a free DVD. And so that is the um, content that we are continuing to use. Where, wait, wait, when are these videos shown? Like what time in the school year? Is it Typically the Friday afternoon before spring break. Mm -hmm. So they can talk to their parents. And one, um, I've watched and watched these videos over and over again. Um, one of the things that I see often is that it encourages students many times throughout the 16 minutes to talk to their parent or a trusted adult. And that's what we want. We want the conversation between the parent and their child. And I think these videos provide that opportunity. And I will say some of the campuses do uh, have this uh, instruction uh, the Friday or the day before, prior to Christmas break for the exact same reason. If they get to that point in the semester, they could do this depending on the, on the campus schedule as if for the same reason that Mr. Robertson just described. But of course, we'll have to see how we do with the, uh, the consent forms before we decide that. Well, it could be pushed to spring. Time on the consent forms for those though. Right? Yeah, we have, there's no mm -hmm. timeline for that. Well, yeah. oh, Mitchell Intermediate said November 17th and 18th. Okay. So, we definitely need to survey our schools and make sure they aren't doing this before we get our phones out. Um, we don't want to break any laws after that. Absolutely. What environment um, are the kids watching? Is it in PE? How many kids in grade level altogether? Is it like I can't speak to the, the um, exact break up on the, on the campus individually, but it is generally the, um, the, the boys will stay in the gym with the, uh, a male teacher, and then oftentimes they take the girls to the library or another area, and so it is, it is separate. And so it's a smaller group, depends on the size of your PE class as to whether, how many would be in that viewing it at one time. Red, I'm so sorry. So. Do 
I didn't do any official survey. My nurses have, um, since we enacted this program, then they have had fewer parents that said, I don't want my child to watch it. And many that said, I don't want my child to watch it, they didn't know what we were showing because there wasn't the opportunity to go and, and, and see it. Yes. Some type of pre and post survey to get because I'm here to be an advocate and supporter for you. Absolutely. I've already been to the teachers. Mm -hmm. And so I hold, I'm always a supporter of literally they have the whole space on the team, not what happened last year. Right. So that, uh, that would be something that I would put as an ask is to see going forward how we can gather it. Well, let me be careful surveying our kids about anything. So um, I do like the idea of getting feedback. I got feedback from my own child because I knew what day he was going to see it. Mm -hmm. And I was curious. I wanted to talk to him about it um, that day after he got home. So I, as a parent, got feedback. And I'd be happy to share that. So maybe what we could do in part of this is encourage the parents that do opt in to do this to talk to their kids after that day and to provide their feedback with how the you know just what their kids thought or even what the parents thought back to maybe the screw market and kind of feedback loop. Yes, um, as I was looking back through my information, it was actually a parent who brought this information to us in 2017 that said, you know, I, I saw this and and um, I think it's really great. Have you all seen this program? We reached out to other school districts and many other area school districts use this very same program. From a communication and video production standpoint, I think they're marvelous. I like how the kids are interacting, mm -hmm. playing the hangman, you know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's very well done, you mm -hmm. know, and not just immediately through a bunch of clinical things for Snickers, it's like, you know, uh, Relationship built so it encourages them to afterwards do the same thing because friends, you know, like seeing them interact over it. So it's really, um, it was marked with a good choice there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch the whole, I didn't get a chance to watch all of the videos, <clears throat> or I guess there's only one, but I watched like half of it and. I thought it was like very matter of fact, like medically. And so like, you know, just like giving them like facts and information, but then also to, I thought it was at their level. Like it wasn't just <coughs> spewing facts and just, but it was just saying like these things, you're gonna have these changes, but um, from the limited amount that I saw, like, it's like, you're gonna have these changes. It's normal. This is what'll happen and like, but they also made it kind of funny at times when they were talking about like body odor and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like it was, and it was the kids talking. So I think that's why it was really good. Okay. Good. I, I spared you those old ones, but <laughs> they're pretty bad. Wow. But I did wonder, so when my kid was in fifth and sixth grade, there were um, links sent to supplemental material. In addition, and it was on, I think, CG's website or um, maybe even always website. It had like instructional PDFs you could download, and it was for teachers, it was for kids, it was for um, parents. Is that provided for the it's strictly the video? It's strictly the video because the always changing website is now changed okay. a lot, and so we don't provide any of that in that. Um, so it's not in the permission form, it's not provided. It's always changing. <laughs> um, cool. yeah. So there's no follow up of any sort on our part. It's basically just show the video, they move them along to the next thing. There's not any really discussion within the you know, group, the teachers, or anything like that. I don't believe it goes back to the teachers at, at all. It, if they have questions, there's a nurse there, right? And, and so anybody have questions about the video, we're not ashamed to show a video, we're not hiding anything. And so uh, if a child, 
child has a question, but depends on what that question is. That's a great question for your mom. Why don't you talk to mom tonight when you get home, right? Because mom signed the permission, mom knew you were here. So that's a great question to ask your mom tonight. So. I have a more fundamental question. Um, <coughs> um, I saw two sentences that said, um, prior to each school year, the district will provide a written notice to the parents of each student enrolled on the trustee's decision on a whether the district will provide human sexuality instruction, and two, whether the district will provide instruction related to prevention, child abuse, and violence, all that. So when I read that, I was like, it sounds like we have a choice. That we wouldn't be a question to, for me. Um, a choice. Um, well, does our district <clears throat> have to provide these videos to our children at all or any of these um, presentations? Okay. So, I, say, I think that maybe what the opt in and opt out is for is giving them a choice. They do, I feel like. Mm -hmm. I'm also considering myself as an advocate of kids that may not have parents or families that are going to take that. And so I would argue that it's really important to offer this and have them opt in because this may be one of the only opportunities that they have. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, I, I, so that's what I was saying is I think the district has made the decision that we, we will do this, but do, do we have some kind of notice that prior to this every is it prior to every school year, each school year written notice to the parents prior to each school year? Did we do that? Just so I'm clear, where are you reading from? Um, it's a uh, section twenty eight that gives us our letter from the smaller I and the statements before each school year schools are shocked for like written notice to a parent of each student and will make a certain of board of trustees decision regarding whether the student will provide, I'm sorry, whether the district will provide human technology instruction to the district students. If instruction will be provided, the notice must be given and has a lot of language about what should be there. And I think to, I'm sorry, you don't hear me, but I think to your point that we are advocating for students, you know, in, as well as preserving the parents' right to do what they love to do with the child. So more communication, you know, starting the school year, I think that would be good. I mean, it's what the law is asking us to do, but that would be us like, hey, this is coming down the pipeline, so they're looking for it, and, they're, and if they're not looking for it, then it puts it on their radar to look for that communication. And I think that's a good thing. The more we can communicate with parents, I think the better a chance we have to impact the students and understand what's happening to their So, you're, yeah, so you're, not, you're just saying, let's communicate this more, let them know what's coming, not all the Table and we're tabling the use of the instruction, the tabling of the fifth and sixth grade instruction. I think we're just suggesting that the subcommittee that works on the consent forms also work on the communication of parents, and possibly that's one and the same. But just make sure that we're meeting the text of the code that you read, that we're meeting the intent of that and what we're communicating. I think for the sake of time, that's a good idea. Just go around the public. My understanding and reading the code as well is that the same expectation applies to uh, 
and not only human sexuality, but also discussions like human trafficking, child abuse, and that other exception as well. So okay. Same comment applies to student crime. Right. So, like, the way you send these, make these permissions to stop in, say, like, August, or then you get that link to purchase, like, whatever contact information, you do all of this then? Perhaps at this point, it could relate kind of like to the game is saying that they wanted the same this year. I would say going forward, more of the intent is the beginning of the school year, you have a communication, and then later there's the consent form. That, that's my understanding. And I agree. And I think late to the game is kind of the, the term of the day because all this came so late to us. And we really, it was a scramble to try to get it all mm -hmm. and everything being so new. Dr. Hans? Okay. It's in the handbook? Okay. Correct. Okay. But also, it doesn't really apply to every student in high school because. Some students take help in a different grade. So, like, if that communication is sent out, people are going to be confused if their kid is not helped that year. Like, my son took help in eighth grade, He's now in tenth grade. Um, so, he got that in eighth grade, but not all those kids took help in that grade. So, if he sent that blanket out, like, hey, we're going to be showing your kid, and they're like, what? And, like, my kid's not taking help. Why are, you know, why are they showing this? So, I feel like. I feel like this paper, this form, and we get an email with the link is the communication. I feel like what other communication does there need to be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I just I, I thought that I would I deduce that it's kind of been a routine part of fifth and sixth grade right. for years, yes. right? So um, I believe even that's one. Um, it was when I was in the so I don't know. I think we had a fourth grade. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> right. So I think everything changed, right, with the opt-in versus opt-out. That's the only thing that changed, but we have always provide the instruction, and we always can right. plan to continue to provide the instruction. Yeah. But the opt-in. The and what's requested and has changed. The procedures of opting in. Right. Mm -hmm. so, that's, so we're focused on the, those procedures. Yes, ma'am. So human growth and development and human sexuality, are we using those? It's human sexuality, human growth and development, human sexuality, it, it, you look, it's the same. Human growth and development, human sexuality, yeah, it's the term they use to teach human growth and development. Okay, because the, what she was pointing out in the law, it said human sexuality, mm -hmm. and then the law consent plan to the lower grades, it says human growth and development. I think there's some confusion. We mentioned human sexuality, a lot of parents were like, what, what are we talking about here? And we're like, it's the human growth and development that we've always taught. So I think that's why that was written out in that way. So there wasn't any confusion about it. It is the same. Yeah. 
That subcommittee could look at that for about, yeah. And, and the open house idea is well, if your students enrolled in that in that teacher's class, then they would definitely present that at that open house meeting if they're enrolled in that class. All right. Okay, let's move on. The next item is a review of intermediate human growth and development instruction. I'm sorry, nope. <laughs> Lost my but consider the approval of the sixth grade Senate Bill nine instruction. This is gonna be an action item. So a copy of the lesson was provided to all SHAP members last week. This instruction will be given by intermediate campus counselors during PE class. This resource was created with the sixth grade health teaks as a guide and with the approved Goodhart Wilcox instructional materials as a source for the lesson development. Um, Ms. Robson, I get that. Do, do, do y'all want me to put, put it up on the uh, screen as well? It's the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Is it the next presentation? It should be the next PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you have a copy as well. It says uh, child abuse. Yes, yeah, sixth grade presentation. Yes, you have a copy as well. But we can go ahead and pull it up. So I can I can scroll through if you'd like, or you guys have. I mean you. You had it prior to the meeting, and then you have a copy in front of you as well if you want to take a look at it. But I'll just kind of give you a, a brief overview. So this information, it uh, comes from the Goodhart Wilcox supplemental piece. And the thing about the Goodhart Wilcox, uh, again, it was quite the, the journey to get all the online stuff in place. You know, again, it was very late. Um, we do have it in place. So all of our Health One students in eighth grade or high school do have access to the online textbook, which in turn gives parents access to the textbook. But as far as the Senate Bill 9 material and the human sexuality, human growth and development material, those things are in a separate uh, resource. And so a child will not be able to log in and oh, come across this. You know, it's in a, it's in a supplemental piece. It's, uh, it's a text. They do not have it online. And that's, and that's for good reason. But we do have copies of it on every campus. And so if a parent would want to look at it specifically, they could request to uh, set up a time in the library and look through this material. But what we've done is we've, we've taken all the teaks and the material, we put them into a PowerPoint that we've geared towards the sixth grade. And again, um, you know, these, this is some very mature material, um, but we want to be sure this is the teaks are something that the kids could understand. It's more of an introduction. Uh, a lot of the terms are define, identify. Those how, that's how the teaks are written for this. And so that's what the basis for this presentation was. It doesn't go into a lot of detail. We're not going into a lot of detail. And again, the, the premise of this is that it's shown and if there's specific questions that children go home and speak to their parents about it. And you'll see that the, that's very heavy in the presentation is uh, to go speak to a trusted adult. There it goes. Um, and again, for this one, it just kind of gives kids some ideas of what uh, like child abuse examples would look like, things that they would be hearing or seeing or, or, or having somebody say to them. Uh, it, it, it defines the difference between child abuse and neglect. Oh, sorry guys. This is opt-in, yes, a required opt-in as well. Uh, dating violence. And y'all know the sixth graders, they're dating. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but these are just some things to look for. And again, this comes from uh, the middle school adopted text. These are some things that, they, you know, that kids could look for in the case that they might be experiencing these things. If someone's, you know, trying to manipulate you, um, you know, it tries to make you feel guilt, whatever else, you know, uh, to the point where you feel like, you know, it's becoming something that's more of a controlling type behavior. And this is where, again, it's encouraged to speak to adults about it. Uh, human trafficking is discussed in this, what it looks like, what it is. I mean, kids hear these terms all the time, you know, but we want to be sure that they understand what the meaning is behind these terms. And again, it's just an introduction to them in the sixth grade. Some signs of human trafficking. You know, it's things that they may would see in another child, possibly, you know, um, that again, if they're, say, would have some concern about a child, and we'd hope that they would go speak to an adult about it. What to do if you experience violence, you can see it's very, very heavy and talk to a trusted adult or parents.
Okay. And so do, these topics are pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, you know, if this, I mean, I know you can opt in or out, so that's fine when parents can decide based on their material. Right. But um, I just feel like for a sixth grader, I'm thinking of my dad, like I have a fourth grader who's not, but I just know how mature, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so these, when you're talking about human trafficking and like, you know, those types of things, like, is it, I guess my question is, is it appropriate for, for sixth grade? Because mm. I know you, you can choose not to do it, and that's fine, but I just don't know if they have the mental, literally, like, the mental capacity yet as a child in the development to, like, process that. Right. We can, yes, please. I have three daughters. Um, my oldest now is 37, and my youngest is 21. When my youngest was in going into seventh grade, she's had to stay in my life. And the predominant bit of the time was the same. Um, she was approached in school by a girl who was raided her. And she wanted to spend the night in her house. Little did she know the family behind that was a family of human traffickers that had come over and they were basically being held over properties and different things. So Working in the field that I work in, I educated my children myself on the different things. Um, had I not done that, I only sure to think like what may have happened to her. So, out of personal experience, exposure is always the most comfortable thing for us as parents because we want to believe that it's not going to happen to our children. And I'm working in some other things, and it is no, you know, it does not discriminate at all. So. Yeah, prostitutes not mentioned in the <laughs> curriculum at all. <laughs> yeah. It's very right, but we don't mention those terms too. That's sixth grade. I'll let you. you want to speak? You speak. Tell the group. No, share your point. Yeah. I 
I think with, with like kind of a near miss on that, and she came to me and we talked about it, that's very open, but I think that that's a real risk for our kids. And, they, and my daughter's response was, well, no, she's safe because she had a friend with her. And I was like, oh, wait, I know. That's, that's kind of how they work. Like, they make it look like it's nice and it's not nice. Um, and so that happened a year ago um, when she was 10, so it's like fifth grade. So you recommend adding specific social media sites to this slide, the or third bullet point? Like, something to raise awareness, I would defer to the teacher, the social media, or online gaming. Yeah, online gaming. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think that's something that we should be looking at. Okay. So we want to add the terminology social media and online gaming. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will, while you're in the Sure. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is available to parents. This will be posted. This is everything we're talking about today. All this information will be posted online for parents to view. Okay. Everything. Is there you said is not available to parents? Oh, the the uh, the the uh, the text for the human sexuality piece or human growth and development. The Good Heart Wilcox. Yeah, yeah. They, they anything that has to do with this is a text piece. It's not online at all. So students can't just happen upon it. Okay. It's whether this the health and this none of the none of the middle school is online. It's all the the health one. It's all online, but it's not the. This is available to, yeah, to parents. Yeah. Any more comments, discussion? Do we need to go through the rest of the slides? I think we went through almost every one of them. Yes, ma'am. I was just wondering, if, um, it seems like physical abuse is kind of focusing on this, and how I understand that that's kind of easier to see with the school district. Um, it talks about emotional mental abuse, but we really don't go into any. This is strictly from the teaks and, and from the text. So, I mean, the terminology and the topics come directly from the teaks and the text. So, um, okay. yeah. So there was, there was no, um, as far as going into detail. The terminology, and it comes from the text and from the, uh, the, the text. Yes, yeah, the teaks and the text. I'm not sure I understand the question then, maybe. No, there's, what she said, there's those teeks, I guess, that like, come from the state, right? Right. Oh, but, right, so the fact that she was based off of that is how I understand it. Correct, correct. This is a lot of information, and I'm just wondering, is every single thing in this, like, are you talking about? I mean, I just, I'm asking this question because I personally have experienced mental abuse, and I didn't understand what that was, and I'm 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of think if we're going to put a bullet at the very beginning of the slide and just find it, I just wonder why we didn't really address it very much in the, in the context. And if there's a reason, I mean, that's very, I just think that's enough. Right, I understand. Okay, any more comments or questions? 
All right, so now I'll call for a motion to vote for the approval of the sixth grade Senate Bill non instructional resource. Do we have a motion? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, with the edit on that slide on human trafficking to add and online gaming with the edit. Correct. Do I have a motion? Yeah. I'm sorry. Do we have a motion to approve? I have some Do we have a second? Yes, Any discussion? Okay, if there's no discussion, we'll now vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed? Okay, the sixth grade Senate bill, non-instructional resource on child abuse, family violence, dating violence, and human trafficking is approved. Thank you. Okay, everybody doing okay? <laughs> it's a lot of information, guys. I really appreciate your time. All right, the next item is an update on the Health One Human Growth and Development or Human Sexuality Instruction. As a reminder, I'm sorry, as a reminder, uh, this, um, this came out late this week. We had our Health One teacher leaders working on this. And what they've, what they've done is in the past, we've used a PowerPoint presentation that was approved by the SHAC. And they took the information and they used the new TEKS and the new uh, Good Art Wilcox material. And they updated the terminology, they updated the graphics, updated the statistics. Uh, the visuals and things like that. The core content remained the same. The TEKS remained very, very similar. They just added those extra things that the text did have that did, did provide. So again, the focus now is on back on human sexuality or uh, human growth and, and, re, and uh, on, uh, development. Um, so the material for this, again, as a reminder, came out of the Proclamation 2022. Um, all the health teachers have been using this resource since it's been approved by the SHAC. So again, the main thing was consistency across the district where a student could go to any campus and receive the same instruction at any campus. Um, so that was the purpose of the SHAC years ago, producing this PowerPoint presentation so that all the teachers would be teaching the same thing. No one's going off on their own teaching whatever, but everybody's teaching the same thing. So that was the purpose of this. And so the teachers that took this information and created this new PowerPoint had that in mind. A lot of them have been teaching for quite a while. And so they understand the importance of being consistent across the district. And that's what led to the creation of this PowerPoint also. Um, all the junior highs and high schools also have print copies of the text. We've mentioned this before. So they have print copies of all the materials. And once again, if your child is enrolled in a Health One course in eighth grade or any time in high school, you also have access to the online. We also just recently updated the SSO. There's a button on SSO now where students can go just click on that button and have access. And then you will also have access to it as well. So it makes it a lot easier for parents to see it. So you have the SSO. And you also have the online access to it. So you can see it both ways, whichever is easiest for you, whatever access you have. I'm sorry. Well, this is this is the act. Well, well, this is the actual instruction. Okay. Yeah, the yeah, parents want to opt into this as well. But we're going to review those opt in forms. So it won't be on their SSO if they've been opted in. No, well, the materials there, not the, no, this will not. Okay. No, this will never be on their SSO. This material will be only accessible by parents on, on my website. So students can't log into their SSO. All they'll see is the, they're, they're, you know, they'll see like the, the nutrition lessons, those kinds of, all the other health teaks besides these are on that online text. These are not accessible online to students. Okay. Can you have a, um, a list of the things that they amended um, from before? I know you in summary of what they did, but I'd have to go back and see it. I have to go back and look. I don't have the comparison notes. It's just what the final product is that what we're looking at today. And I know you guys got it real late, so I am going to go through this slide. I'll go these pretty quickly. Again, this is very sensitive material, but this is what, you know, we're, this is part of the TEKS. Uh, and again, you can see it's a little more involved, a little more in depth in the sixth grade, obviously. So I won't read those, so I'll just kind of go through them quickly. You have them in front of you as well. We have Health One teachers that teach it. They're certified to teach Health One. And as we go through, if you have a question about slide, oh, sorry about that, please stop me. Yes. They're together. Mm -hmm. Like, 
No, the, what you're seeing is what will be taught for this curriculum, for this lesson. Human sexuality. Human sexuality, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. This is what all in the health elective. In the health elective, yes, ma'am. Okay. No, I mean, the slides look okay, but like, could a teacher, like college professors, sometimes they can throw their opinions out, mm -hmm. deviate from how, how do you ensure that? Yeah, well, the expectation is, and that's a very good question. Yeah. Right. Right. I understand. Yeah, the, the, the expectation is that's why we have this in place. That's why we want to get Shaq to be to be aware of it. Is that the expectation is you teach this, you use the terminology that's placed here and not beyond that. And so, if something would happen, of course, that would be a campus, you know, issue. You know, you, of course, you would let your administrator know. But otherwise, we want everybody teaching the same thing. You know, I'll speak to once again, this is from an eighth grade, or if you have from eighth grade on our campus, we have two no coaches that teach this. Uh, I'm very aware of when this is being called, and they're very aware of what the expectation is. Oh, it's you have five and five. Yeah, I, I drop in. This is my claim for sure. But they do a great job on that. That's just one school on the campus, but I feel like that's just great. Because they collaborate with them. Mm -hmm. and all Yes, we all meet together at least once a year. And again, it was very tight this year, but again, they know what the expectations are. They've been doing this a lot, they've been doing it for a while. And we have some great mentors to our younger teachers, you know, so, and this was something that we did discuss is this when we teach this, you know, and obviously in, in a lot of this, you want to stay true to the teaks and true to the lessons. You know, I'm Barbara said something earlier that we, we really want to, whatever's taught, we want parents to know that they won't talk to your parents about mm -hmm. this. Okay. I have I don't have this available, no. I'm sure possibly we do. I'm not sure though. No, man, and that did that did not come from us. We didn't do that survey, so I have no idea. I'm not really, I can't really can't speak to that. Hey, my name is Rock Chavez. I'm the director of outreach and drug off prevention, and uh, I'm a social worker who works with the teens, teens, and school district. And we have seen a significant decrease in teen pregnancy, and significant like uh, 50 percent. And, and so, well, what are the numbers? That, and the, a few years back, we had a uh, a hundred kids, and then we got down to 70. So right now we are 50, 40, I mean, to the point that, uh, that we consider, uh, we don't know what the success is uh, true to, but uh, it has decreased. The student in Rome has gone up, that number has gone down. Yes. Okay. All right, we'll keep moving through. Again, please stop me if you, yes, ma'am. Um, on, on these slides, um, have we looked at it against the section 28.004 um, with regard to the four bullets on abstinence? Well, we're getting to that. It's coming. It's in, yes, ma'am. Yeah, abstinence. Well, I, know it's, I know it's in here, but okay. Cool. Okay. Again, this all comes, these are directed from the TEKS and from the approved text. If you were to look at the text, um, you'd see that a lot of these are, these graphics come from the text. Some of them are, are with, from the uh, old PowerPoint and just been updated, new graphics.
again, this PowerPoint is created in an instructional format for teachers to use, to have discussion with the students as they're going through these different graphics. Again, this can also be used, they could uh, eliminate the print in red, have students have a discussion about it or however they want to use the instructional piece. But this is with everything together. So that's why it's this way so you guys can see it with the answers included. And move on to pregnancy. Oh, sorry guys. Again, please stop me if you need to, if you want to discuss any of these. I can't go into the details of it with you, but I'll stop this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's very, you know, the, the terminology is very science-based. It's just, again, it comes directly from the text. Yes. What if the student asks the teacher um, when the slides began? What is the teacher expected to say? That would be a question I would defer to the parents. Okay, so yes. that should be their response. Mm -hmm. okay. mm And I think a lot of, and that's a great point you made. And I think a lot of this, and again, it's just one of the things where we want parents to be involved in the teaching of this information to their children. But at the same time, in, you know, school is a place where you have also trusted adults who have this information available to them and they're not getting it from a phone or whatever else or some sort they probably shouldn't be getting it from. You know, so that's why we do have the opt-in, opt-out. But also for some kids, it's would be a great place for them to get this information in the correct way. Okay. This is the three slides on absence. Um, in Texas, uh, in the Texas Education Fix Section 28, about the report, saying what I'm going to refer to, it, it was four points. Abstinence. It says the materials must present one abstinence as the preferred choice. Devote more attention to abstinence than any other behavior. Mm -hmm. Emphasize abstinence with the only method of 100% effective preventing pregnancy, which I saw slides specifically on that. And direct adolescents to a standard of behavior of abstinence before marriage. I just wanted to see if you think that this presentation covers all four points. We can continue through, and then if, if, if somebody finds that it doesn't, yes, we can sh certainly address that.
Um, I'm not sure why the, I don't know. Yeah. It's an infection, so I guess they just, yeah. yeah. There's some more. There's some more. Yeah. Yeah. There's risk factors for STIs. Bacteria. Um, that we in the past, but the new um, material does not have the picture, specific pictures of it, you know, um, so we did not include them in it because they were not a part of the new text. Um, I, you know, pictures do speak salvin words, but um, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. The parents they they encourage the parents to be if they if you want to have more specific pictures to go home and ask for parents to be to sit with your parent and have those pictures you know placed in front of you not on this slideshow. But that is a great question. Right. But again, that the text did not have uh, the, the specific pictures of any of this in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember as well. Um, yeah, sensitivities have changed towards some of this, you know, and so I think that's, that's the reason behind the text, you know. Um, but again, it wasn't something that we have approved. You know, so it wasn't in there. So that's why we didn't. So again, anything that would go beyond this, I would definitely not recommend a teacher show anything. Um, you know, we can, we'll teach what we have. And then beyond that, the parents will be responsible for that. Be on their yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, I, that's what we hope they wouldn't do. But yeah. um, oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, talks about the pregnancy risks and all those kind of things. At risk, uh, risk to conceiving child, and one thought is that many kids are not engaging in this activity, but I've heard that most don't. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the perception that kids have is that everybody's doing it. Mm. Right? It's just the opposite. Right. I, mean, it, I don't have language to back up that. Which slide were you speaking of? It's earlier. It says okay. many do not engage in sexual activity. Uh, I mean, I think it's most. Yeah. Right. And I, and I see your point. Again, it was, it's just not part, it's not mentioned as part of the, uh, the text or the teaks.
getting just another visual for students to kind of see. What are you, are you on this slide here? Okay. 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 I think that's what the arrow is pertaining to because it says it leads to a disease. It's not saying that within itself it is a Yeah, which leads to cancer, which cancer has no cure. Correct. That's I think that's how it's risk. written. It's a risk factor for cancer. So I don't know if this is too much of a but, you know, I think that that's not so bad. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So you recommend to move to the curable category? Because HPV is curable, but cancer is not. That's what you're saying? Oh no, I'm not questioning you. I'm just saying how what how would you switch to grad? Yes. I would just do it a, another asterisk or something um, and state, you know, like they count any cause of infertility. It doesn't mean it always will. Um, but, you know. Um. I think just taking the no cure out will, will help with that. Um, but I think it's a separate slide that says no cure and then puts a viral. I think the point is there's no cure. Yeah, I think that's right. right. So do we want? Okay. Yeah, so, uh, okay. I'll put the motion to jump in. We can go. We move on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Absence again. <laughs> and this may this may address some of the uh, questions you had earlier. And this comes directly from the text. We did not create this. This comes from the. Not all this comes from the the text. And then we have the references. Okay. Any other, any other comments or questions? Again, that's been approved by the uh, previous chat, but we wanted to present this to you guys again just for transparency and just let you know what's new 
and also to uh, because of the new opt-in procedures, which we're going to get right on right away, uh, so that we can give this instruction to students. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Consider the approval of the Health One Senate Bill Nine instruction. Uh, again, a copy of the list was provided to all SHAP members last week. Thank you. And so uh, you have a copy in front of you as well, again, and I'll kind of go through it. Um, again, the Senate Bill 9 material, uh, this is a little, a little more mature because of the audience. Uh, when we say high school, you know, one of the requirements was that students receive this instruction twice during their school years. And so, you know, say Texas considers sixth grade and middle school. So that does fulfill that requirement. And then the high school um, curriculum, uh, they can take it in eighth grade if they choose, or they can take it any time during their high school years. So it looked very similar. Uh, one thing they did focus on is the sexual abuse part. That did kind of a little more, a little more focus on that with this older age group. I'm sorry, did I miss one? Are you? What is legal consent? It's direct verbal freely given agreement. It's some higher than the legal oh. age of 17 in Texas, apparently. Yeah. Con consenting to, I guess, what? What legal consent? To have sex with somebody. Oh, so the legal age for in Texas for consent for, for anybody is 17. Is that what? Yeah. I, I don't know what the state law Oh, that's correct. I understand. Thank you. Guys, if you need to leave, I understand. That's important. I'm trying to go as quick as we can. Again, all this comes directly from the TEKS. The TEKS provided guidance, and then the, the text is what's the terminology, exactly from the text. And this has been voted on, right? No, we're voting today because okay. this is a new SB9. So we'll, so we'll have to go, we'll have to review the, the opt-in forms, but this is the material. We can vote on the material today. Mm -hmm. If we agree on the material, we can. This will be in place. And again, this is what will be consistent across the entire district. Every uh, classroom in eighth grade is teaching health one, and every high school classroom teaching health one will use the exact same lesson. Um, Does it not go into emotional abuse in specific sites? I don't know if it goes into specific emotional abuses. It just we again we went straight with what the teachers uh, told us to teach. Yeah, I don't think they don't go into the details of different types of emotional abuse. No, it's not when written through cheeks. Uh, it does a little bit, like it says, examples of it, abuse. So it's like the fourth one. Um, but it does go into emotional abuse. Yeah. 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 Yeah
uh, eighth as an eighth grade as an elective, and then ninth through twelfth as an elective. Also, it's a semester course. And this one kind of goes into a, a, a little more detail on the difference. I think, like you might have mentioned, about labor trafficking versus sex trafficking for this old, for this age group. Oh, this would be like a like one day of the semester. Like that's when the opt in form. They'd say this is the day we're going to teach this, and then that would be the day you would opt in or out so only for this, and then also for the the other one. I should have, I should have quizzed you on this first before we start doing, but you'll see. <laughs> but you have the answers in front of you. I didn't even know. Yeah, I'm sure they didn't know that either. I was like, we could make that change. Um, we can look and see what's in the text. The text does have it, and I can uh, we can add it if um, if it's in the text. Right. Well, we don't want to go too far off and start citing resources that haven't been approved. You know, if we just start pulling from here and there, it becomes a really sticky situation. So that's why we have what's approved. That's what we use. We stick to that. And the TEKS definitely, we stick to those. That's what the state mandates. But, um, but I'm sorry, I missed the last comment. You said that we want to add also to social media, online gaming as social media. Okay. I, I agree. That's part of the social media. So we can definitely add that. Okay, so anywhere we have social violence, we want to add the online gaming as well. Okay. It's unfortunate that we do have to address these things, but it's the world we live in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the grooming. Uh, we do uh, partner with our Crime Stoppers group, uh, and they do a good job. They come and meet with the coaches as well, you know, and, um, you know, just kind of give them information as well. Just kind of one of those things, you know, hey, let's reinforce when we teach this stuff. It's very serious. It's very real. Make sure you stick to the script, but also, you know, be passionate about it and encourage those children to speak to their parents about it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm hmm
again, focus on this is speak to an adult, trust an adult, go to your parents, go speak to somebody, you know, just go ask for help or anything else. Again, these tips come from the text as well, some things that you should do to help prevent violence. Very similar to what you saw previous. And again, references. Okay, do we have any questions, any more comments about any of those slides? Okay, uh, now I'll call for a motion to vote for the approval of the Health One Senate Bill non-instructional resource. Do I have a motion? Okay, a second? Yes, with the edits, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am, with the edits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, any more discussion? Okay, there's no more discussion, we'll vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, all opposed? Okay, unanimous, thank you. The Health One Senate Bill 9 Instructional Resource on Child Abuse, Family Violence, Dating, Violence and Human Trafficking is approved. Okay, we've reached the end of our agenda. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the time is now 6.24. If there are no objections, we'll adjourn the meeting. Uh, yes. Just for the sake of yeah. I asked uh, down towards the pregnancy, that you started keeping track of this around 2005, and the highest number we ever had was for the year 2007 2008, we had 152 pregnancies. Last year we got 53. So that was pretty accurate. And the other school districts are experiencing the same. I just wanted to make sure that I, since I opened my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, that, with that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all so much for being here.